no small undertaking. I had put my little mouth to this gushing source where Father Ennius, the inventor of Roman epic poetry, when he was thirsty, once drank and sang the Curian brothers and the weapons of the Harassii, kingdoms and trophies brought on the Emilian ship, victorious delays by Fabius, the unlucky battle of Cannae and gods turned by pious vows, the Lares vanishing Hannibal from the Roman seat, and Jove saved by the honking of geese. When Phoebus, spying me from a Castalian tree, speaks up, leaning on his golden lyre in front of the cave. What does this river have to do with you, you flake? Who asked you to try heroic poetry? There's no success awaiting you here, Propertius. Small wheels are for tilling soft fields. May your book be often tossed on the night table. May a girl read it alone while expecting her man. Why does your page drift from its prescribed course? Your genius skiff, skiff must not be overloaded. So we see in this little section how Propertius' use of mythology is very playful. And he often combines mythological examples with very down-to-earth daily street language. And he also often gets myths wrong, we might say, or not in the other versions that we have. But we have to remember that myths were, were fluid. They were told, and they were retold, and they were embellished, and they were changed. So we have the versions that we know from Homer, for example, and we think that those are the versions. And in some sense, they are, because Homer was so influential. But we have to remember that there were always other versions. But So he may be referring to versions that we are not familiar with, or he may be reinventing. 